Hi everyone, Brick Waffle here. We're standing here at the Brick Waffle base. You can see the syrup up there coming out of the waffle. That's a nice new feature that I've just added at my base, but today we're not going to be spending any time at the base. We're going to go instead to the Nether Hub at the Town Hall, and I'm going to show you a little bit about how our servers got that set up, and then I'll do a quick tutorial on how you can build one of a similar pattern to help keep your spawns down and your railways safe in the Nether. So I'll be right back when I'm at the Nether Hub. Okay, and we're back at the Nether Hub here. You can see the sign and the portal for the Town Hall. And what we've got is a bunch of sidelines that come off of here. These are just stubs right now for the folks that haven't joined our server yet. We do have some that are here for people who have joined the server, and of course one line that is currently out of order. But I wanted to show you guys a little bit about how we put these things together. You can see that these are half slabs here on the floor, and the floor of this entire room is also half slabs. And that makes it so that monsters can't spawn up here. The other thing that we want to show you is that this is actually up at 115 on the y-axis, so we're up in the nether ceiling. That means that there's very few gaps around us for monsters to spawn, and given the way that the algorithm checks for open areas, this should also keep things from spawning in here on the rails. So what I'd like to do is go over to our test world and show you how we built this. So if you've seen my first video, you'll probably recognize this portal, but what we're going to do is go through here, and I'll show you the basic layout of how this thing is put together. Now I am in creative mode, obviously you would be, if you want to do this in survival that's perfectly fine, um, but for the sake of this demonstration I'm just going to go ahead and tunnel up into the appropriate height in the nether here. It just takes a few minutes and you can see there is some lava down here. That can be a problem if you're doing this in survival, you do need to be extremely careful about where you're actually starting this out, um, but once you get in here you can just come in and knock out a little area. You want to make this three tall to start with. Oops, a little too far down. And I apologize for this being dark. Let me give you some light in here. If I can type, that would help as well. Um, but once it's three tall, it's going to make it much easier to put in all of your other bits and pieces that you need to keep monsters from spawning. So for those of you who don't know, uh, portals in the nether and portals in the overworld are matched up. The difference is only that portals in the overworld, the coordinates are eight times the number they are in the nether. So for example, right here, you can see that I'm at negative 1.7 on X and negative 0.7 on Z. So I'm very close to zero, zero. Now, in that case, it's very easy. In the nether and the overworld, zero, zero corresponds to zero, zero. But for example, if I went to 8.8 eight in the nether, that would correspond to 64, 64 in the overworld. That's important because what we want to do is come back down to our original portal and break it. And once we disable that portal and wait 30 seconds, which is how long it takes for a portal to stop being connected, when we create a new portal in roughly the same location, it'll tie up to our existing portal in the overworld. So whenever you first come in, you just want to go straight up and put your new portal down there. This does require you to have obsidian, of course, and you can make this whatever size you like. In this case, I'm going to do the standard portal size, which is just too wide. Oops. And when I light this with flint and steel, we should see that it goes back to my existing portal, and it does. So now these two portals are connected, and I'll show up in the top of the nether here at that 115 height that we like so much. So a couple of things you can do at this point. One, you could start slabbing in. I'm going to use some different colored slabs, just like I did in my other video, uh, or earlier in the video, rather. And we're also going to want some rails and powered rails and buttons. Uh, you may also want glowstone, torches, or other kind of light objects, but this is kind of the minimum set you need to get started. And the first thing I would suggest is go ahead and just slab in your portal. Right off the bat, what this will do is prevent any creatures from spawning. Monsters cannot spawn in the portal blocks themselves, um, or rare, very rarely can pigmen spawn in there. Uh, in fact, they only spawn near portal blocks in the overworld, but here this will prevent anything else from spawning. Now, ghasts, if this were taller, could potentially spawn even over a slabbed floor, so we don't want to do that. But at this point, you're basically set up to start your, your build with the rest of this. So I'm going to move these into the walls a little bit, just to give us some even lighting here. And then all we have to do is pick a direction and start digging. So what we did for our server on Wolf Raven is we just picked an area like this, carved out three blocks, 
and just went back a little bit until we were happy with it. Now obviously this isn't symmetrical, I know that. Um, for those of you that might complain about that sort of thing, don't, I'm aware of it, I understand, but it's just a demo. So this is the basic layout. Just slabs on the floor, solid blocks, you can use nether rack, whatever else you want. Nether rack's easy, especially if you're clearing this out. When you put your rails down here, solid block, powered rail. And as soon as you put a button on this, you're ready to go. As soon as you put a minecart here, it would fire off down the hallway, no problem. Now how far you space your powered rails really depends on whether or not you're ever going to send unoccupied carts. The distance for unoccupied carts, you have to have powered rails every eight blocks. I recommend every 30. Uh, you can get away with every 20. It really depends on how fast you want to go uh, and if you have any hills. The other advantage to building up this high is you generally will never run into any need for hills. Uh, the y-axis is ignored when you're doing portals between the overworld and the nether, so it doesn't matter where your portal is in the overworld. This works just fine. And we put the minecart down. We'll hop in. We do bounce back in this case because it's powered. The other thing you'll notice is you don't suffocate in a transparent block and you get a free x-ray machine out of it. Now if you stop inside of glowstone when you're up against a wall where your head's in the glowstone, you can see right through the nether. It's kind of an interesting little trick. Now just to prove that I'm not suffocating, I'm going to put myself back in survival mode. Obviously my head is still in the salad block. I'm not taking any damage. No problems there. If I back up, hit the button. Right through it, again, no problems. You do take a half-hearted damage when you jump out if you're stuck in one of these blocks, but it's not, uh, not anything you can't overcome. You could also move these glowstone blocks out of the way so that when you stopped, you wouldn't take any damage. Now I will say that the thing you want to do is if this were the end of our tunnel, you'd simply want to keep this unpowered. And any minecart that stops on unpowered rails is simply going to stop rather than bounce back. And then you hop out and you're done. This is pretty easy. You just have to expand the size of your room based on how many directions you want to go. And if you need this like Wolf Raven, where you have three in every direction, obviously you're going to want to be a much larger room. If you have a lot of people on your server, you can also go up or down a level and have multiple levels in a lobby. You can go four or five wide, however you want to do it. The general idea is that this sort of pattern here prevents anything from spawning while still being able to get on here and ride a mount through it. So that's it for our tutorial today. If you have any other questions, please let me know. Please leave me a like, a favorite, feedback. Uh, if you would like to see more tutorials, feel free to suggest them. I'll try to come up with whatever I can and send them to you. Thank you for watching.